Hi, my name's Tom with some more ATPL tips and today it's a five minute fix for true altitude. Now I've already done a much more in-depth series on altimetry and in this video what I want to do is really quickly blast through uh, what true altitude is and give you the method that I use to answer true altitude questions. Now I'm really quickly going to go through things like converting pressure altitude to indicated altitude and things like ISA deviation. So if you're not already really happy and comfortable with those, then I suggest going and watching the other video series that I've already done. Uh, otherwise, let's go. Okay, let's put five minutes on the clock down here somewhere and let's go. I want to start looking at the cruise phase of flight. Here's a bunch of planes all flying in the flight levels and they're all using a standard pressure setting of 1013 hectopascals or 29.92 inches of mercury if you're that way inclined. Now up high, really the only obstacles that we need to worry about are other aircraft. So it's really important that everyone is using the same altimeter pressure setting. And when we have this set, what we're actually flying is a pressure altitude and we refer to that altitude as a flight level based upon the international standard atmosphere and ISA makes a couple of assumptions firstly that the pressure at sea level is 1013 millibars and that the temperature at sea level is 15 degrees celsius so we can say that pressure altitude is based on a standard pressure and temperature but we hardly ever fly through a standard atmosphere so our flight levels might actually look more like this as we go between different pressure and temperature areas but so long as everyone's set to 1013 hectopascals that doesn't really matter but once we leave the flight levels and get into the approach phase of our flight, suddenly terrain clearance becomes more of a pressing issue. And so we pilots will be given an altimeter setting based on a regional or local QNH. And at that point, our altimeter is reading an indicated altitude. Indicated altitude corrects for non-standard pressures, but an altimeter doesn't have an adjustment for temperature. What that means is that our flight path might still look like this, not because of any dodgy piloting skills, but because we're moving from areas of one temperature into areas of another temperature. So while our indicated altitude might suggest that we've got enough altitude to maintain terrain clearance, actually we might not. And so true altitude takes our indicated altitude and makes an adjustment for non-standard temperatures. Now, temperature error correction. There are two methods. The first one is the method that I tend to prefer because it seems to be slightly more accurate. And that is to take our height above the surface, divide it by a thousand, multiply it by four, and then multiply it by our ISA deviation. And the second method is the 4% rule. And that is for every 10 degrees of ISA deviation, we add or subtract 4% of our indicated altitude, depending on whether we're hotter or colder than ISA. So let's have a look at this exam question. An aircraft is flying at flight level 150 and given the following information, what's the approximate true altitude? Well, here are the steps. The first thing that we want to do is work out our ISA deviation. I'm gonna assume you know how to do that. So today we are ISA plus 10. The second thing that we wanna do is convert our pressure altitude, the flight level, into an indicated altitude. And the first thing I always do here is draw a sketch. Now there's a link in the description below to a PDF of this particular sketch so that you can draw all over it. Now, you've made a sketch, what do you do? Well, you just start filling in the drawing. We've got a QNH of 1003. We're at flight level 150. Given that our QNH is less than 1013, it means our ISA datum is below sea level. So now we need to have a look for our indicated altitude. And first we need to find the difference between the 1013 datum currently set and where the current QNH level is. We've got 1013 and 1003, that's a difference of 10 hectopascals, multiply it by 27 feet per hectopascal, and you might want to use 30, it really doesn't matter, and nine times out of 10 in the exam question itself, 
they'll actually tell you whether to use 27 or 30. In this case, we get 270 feet. So 15,000 minus 270 feet gives us an indicated altitude of 14,730 feet and move on to the next step, which is working out our temperature error correction. You may remember I said there are two methods for working out temperature error correction, and I'm gonna show you how to do both. The first method says that we need to work out what our height above the surface is. Well, we've got an elevation of 720 feet. We've got an indicated altitude of 14,730 feet. So one minus the other gives us a height above the surface of 14,010 feet using our temperature error correction formula, and we come out with 560. The second temperature error correction formula is the 4% rule, which is 4% per 10 degrees over or under the ice or expected temperature. We are actually 10 degrees over, so we can say we're looking for 4%. So 4% gives us 589 point something feet. Now, I'm gonna go with the first number because I prefer that method. So we can take 560, plug that into our true altitude formula, and we come out with 15,290 feet as our true altitude. So from the answers available on the screen, I'm gonna go with option B, and that is it. That is true altitude done in five minutes. Um, hopefully you can see that once you've understood the method, it isn't too complicated, but there are so many ways that they can try to trip you up. So read the question, take your time, don't rush through these questions. Uh, allow yourself a chance to read it, understand it, draw a picture, do whatever you've got to do to make sure you know what they're asking you for. And that's it, you've done it, well done. Um, if there was stuff there that didn't make sense, then by all means go back and watch the longer altimetry series. And perfect. I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That really would mean a lot to me. And I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips.